Your Excellencies, Ambassador Volkan Boska, President of the 75th Session of the United Nations General Assembly, Your Majesties, Your Excellencies, Fellow Heads of State and Government, Your Excellency Mr. Antonio Guterres, Secretary General of the United Nations, Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, allow me first to congratulate you, Ambassador Volkan, on your election to the presidency of the 75th session of the General Assembly. Zimbabwe is confident that under your able stewardship, the General Assembly will proficiently address the challenges that are presently facing our organization and our world. I also wish to convey our sincere gratitude to the president of the 74th session of the assembly, Professor Tijani Mohammed Bande, for skillfully executing his responsibilities during his tenure. This year, we celebrate the Diamond Jubilee of our United Nations Organization. It is gratifying that we continue to make a qualitative difference in the lives of many people throughout the world. Our jubilation has sadly been marred by the COVID-19 pandemic, which has brought to the fore the importance of unity and effective multilateral cooperation in building a future we all want. The theme of this 75th session, the future we want, the United Nations we need, reaffirming our collective commitments to multilateralism, confronting COVID-19 through effective multilateral action, is therefore apt and most appropriate. Today, humanity is at a crossroads as we are confronted by complex challenges that do not respect any borders. Multilateralism is under increasing threat from the blind pursuit of narrow interests. We must therefore strengthen international amity and goodwill, as well as uphold mutual respect and observe the sovereign equality of states. Your Excellencies, Zimbabwe is on a new path. Like other nations in the region, we are facing humanitarian challenges, which in our case have been worsened by the illegal sanctions, the negative impact of climate change, and compounded by the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic. However, my administration continues to record notable achievements towards sustainable development, which leaves no one behind. Our macroeconomic stabilization reforms have seen the reduction of our budget deficit to a single digit as well as a positive balance of our current account, coupled with foreign exchange rate and the prices stability. Major infrastructure projects are ongoing, such as the rehabilitation and construction of health services facilities, water and sanitation infrastructure, as well as roads, dams, and bridges across the country. Investments in mining, agriculture, tourism, energy and manufacturing sectors are on the increase. We are optimistic that the implementation of the second phase of ease of doing business reforms will help to further improve our World Bank rankings. Similarly, my administration is Decisive in entrenching constitutionalism, democracy, and the rule of law, including 
the protection of property rights. The commitment of my government to these cardinal principles remains unwavering. It is in this spirit and in line with our constitution that in July this year, my government concluded the landmark global compensation deed with the former farm owners. We count on the support and goodwill of the international community as we mobilize the resources to implement this agreement. The alignment of our laws to the Constitution is almost complete. While new pieces of legislation continue to be enacted to strengthen our institutions, the raft of political reforms will benefit the generality of Zimbabweans as we consolidate our respect of human rights. My administration places great importance on fostering national unity and cohesion. The culture of dialogue across all sectors is taking root with activities and programs under the auspices of our homegrown political actors dialogue Pollard gaining momentum. Recently, the United Nations Secretary General, the High Commissioner for Human Rights, and the Special Rapporteur on the Right to Food all acknowledged the deleterious effects of the illegal economic sanctions on our country. These are a breach of international law and a compromise Zimbabwe's capacity to implement and achieve sustainable development, especially SDGs 2, 3, 8, 9, and 17. We therefore call on the General Assembly to strongly pronounce itself against these unilateral illegal sanctions on Zimbabwe. Your Excellencies, let me assure you that Zimbabwe continues to implement measures to battle the COVID-19 pandemic over and above instituting phased lockdowns following the World Health Organization guidelines. My government has also provided Zimbabwe dollars 18 billion, which is approximately 720 US dollars million an economic stimulus package. Zimbabwe welcomes calls by the United Secretary General and the Director General of the World Health Organization, Dr. Tedros Ghebreyesus, for the COVID-19 vaccine to be treated as a global public good with guaranteed fair distribution and mechanisms to ensure equal access. We are encouraged by the ongoing cooperation between the United Nations Secretary General, the G20, and the Brenton Woods institutions towards finding solutions to developing countries' debt and related issues. While the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund have supported a date stand still up to the end of the year, more needs to be done. As a committed partner in implementing the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, Zimbabwe welcomed the launch of the Decade of Action. In this spirit, we hosted the 60th Africa Regional Forum for Sustainable Development in Victoria Falls in February 2020, which adopted the Victoria Falls Declaration on the Decade of Action for Sustainable Development in Africa. As we move forward, we believe that strengthening public health systems, international solidarity, and the partnerships are critical. Your Excellencies, as we celebrate 
the 25th anniversary of the Fourth World Conference on Women on 1st October this year, I'm gratified to highlight that Zimbabwe has taken major steps in implementing the Beijing Declaration. These include the adoption of a gender responsive constitution, establishment of the Zimbabwe Gender Commission, enactment of several pieces of legislation to outlaw all practices that infringe on the rights of women and girls, such as forced and child marriages and discrimination against women in inheritance matters. My government has also set up a women's bank to facilitate access to finance by women owned businesses and projects. Your Excellencies, it is now more than 15 years since the adoption of the Ezulwini Consensus, reaffirmed in the CETA Declaration. It is deeply regrettable that reform of the Security Council and implementation of Africa's position has not been achieved. We cannot continue with a situation where over 16% of the world's population does not have a voice in decision making. This is a serious indictment to our avowed commitment to multilateralism and the basic principles of natural justice, fairness and equity. Peace, security and stability are a prerequisite for sustainable development. This can only be achieved in an inclusive process characterized by equally shared commitment and responsibilities. We count on the international community to strengthen its support for AU-led peace efforts. We also look forward to greater collaboration between the AU and the United Nations in maintaining sustainable international peace and security in accordance with Chapter 8 of the Charter of the United Nations, more particularly in ensuring the effective implementation of the AU campaign on silencing the guns. Self-determination and independence are intrinsic and fundamental rights that should be enjoyed by all without distinction. We call on the Security Council to increase its efforts towards ending the occupation of Western Sahara. Zimbabwe also calls upon the Secretary General to appoint his personal envoy for Western Sahara without further delay. Mr. President, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, let me conclude by reaffirming Zimbabwe's commitment to work for a better world. There is no better way of achieving a peaceful and stable world than through mutual respect, genuine multilateralism, buttressed by much needed reforms and respect for international law. Recommitting ourselves to these ideals will pave way for the just world that we all yearn for. I think.